Welcome to a new tutorial. This time it's about the Shimakaze, the new Japanese legendary destroyer. Like every Japanese destroyer, you can easily run the destroyer in a full stealth build, which I do here, and which is uh, the recommended build. While you also can run it in a Kurita gunboat fit, uh, which works not as well, but still very good in situations where you have a lot of destroyers around. And uh, I will soon uh, put another tutorial uh, for the gunboat fit. But this one is about Tanaka stealth gunboating. So you have seen some figures here. Uh, the concealment is 4.6 kilometers. Um, we are using the extended range torpedoes with 11 kilometers. Uh, together with Tanaka, you can also use the uh, range extender perk and you get 12.8 uh, kilometer range. And uh, talking about range, it is very important um, to know that this is the first destroyer uh, reaching that extreme range. And uh, as you might know, most of the radar cruisers, cruisers they hover around 9 kilometers with the radar. There's just one Russian cruiser at the moment with 12 kilometer radars. So basically every cruiser can be torped uh, at 11, 12 kilometers. And that is very convenient because, you know, these cruisers, they usually uh, hover around or hide behind an island. And... Um, not rarely you will find several ships camping behind islands. So this ship will enable you to get around and really uh, push out a lot of torpedoes long range and torp these guys camping. And here you will have two games uh, where I show various situations um, to make use of that. So let's get started. In this game uh, we have only one enemy destroyer, so I decided to go in between B and C. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to find the DD and avoid it as it's a kangaroo and uh, as soon as we spot the kangaroo um, it's very obvious uh, that we have to engage it and engaging a DD always will take off some health. So not every time you want to engage the DD. Sometimes it's better to focus on killing the legendary ships and um, help the team that way, taking, a, taking away the guns from the game. When you enter a cap, the enemy knows where you are, especially if you're the only DD around. So. This time I do not enter the cap immediately because I don't want them to know where I am. While the enemy DD is entering the B cap, as you can see, the B is being capped. So I'm moving a bit more to the left and uh, having a look up, up at what is going to happen in B while I start topping uh, the C cap ships. And here I found the Kagiro, and usually the, the ships uh, stay be behind that big island in B-Cap. So I send a set of torps in that direction, expecting him to camp there and hoping for a hit. While at the same time I got one set out on the legendary and uh, on the juicy hipper, I, I'm expecting the hipper to slow down a little bit if I'm lucky, uh, and then I will hit him. Uh, at the same time, I'm starting to cap C, but as you can see soon, uh, okay, what you can see here is uh, we got a hit, and since we had three sets of torpedoes, you might not actually know which one we hit, but you saw that we got a defend as well, so that means we hit the Kagiro because that was the only capping ship uh, we were aiming at. So the Kagiro should be very slow, so now it's the time to find the Kagiro and finish it off. And uh, since the hipper is chasing us, uh, we cannot uh, cap the C cap, so we're moving out, uh, aiming for the Kigiru, for the B cap, and at the same time constantly monitoring where the other ships are. So now we found the Kigiru, and we, before we open the fire, we make sure all three guns are aligned, because we want to kill him with one, with one or two full salvos. And as you know, as soon as we start shooting, we are being spotted. So we don't want to be spotted just with one gun firing, 
Uh, that's why we first uh, do the turn, then we smoke up, and then we start shooting. And as you can see, we got him. So that's a huge advantage now. Uh, we can move on to B-cap. And you see what I do. I constantly uh, have the aim prediction active and uh, switching from target to target. Why do I do this? Uh, I want to know where everybody is moving and I constantly monitor the minimap to see where is the ideal next target, what can I do. So now I found this um, core first here and uh, I think uh, if you look at the minimap where the, the ship is positioning and the end prediction, uh, it's a pretty safe bet that he's going to continue because he don't expect any, any threat there from, from my blue team. He doesn't see me immediately. Um, so, good chance I get a hit on him. And uh, let's talk about the general strate strategy of the Shimakaze. You have a set of three times five torpedoes. Big advantage is, unlike the French DDs, uh, they all fire to one side, so you don't have to turn around. Um, the biggest mistake what I've seen so far is uh, from, from some of the community videos I've seen uh, from the people testing the ship. Um, usually, because they are used from all the other DDs, um, let's go a step back. If you play a, a Japanese destroyer, you're used to, to fire all your, your two sets at once because you want to get five or six torpedoes in the water. Uh, so usually you fire two times three, two times four at a time to make sure you, you bring down the ship. Uh, people keep this habit with this ship and they, they usually fire f three sets at once. So you are pants down for 100 seconds if you fire all three sets. But let's be honest, uh, these torpedoes hit for 24,000 K per torpedo and you fire five torpedoes in a set. That's a raw damage of 125,000. Let's get into some numbers. Um, they have the, the legendary ships, they have a torpedo protection of uh, 40, sometimes 45%, something like that. So if you deduct uh, 125 um, with 40%, you end up with uh, 75, 80. Um, so having said that, as you can see with the core first here, four torpedoes, uh, four torpedo hits, um, almost bring it down completely, and a fifth is a sure kill. So you don't need to fire, even on a legendary, you don't need to fire three sets of five torpedoes. Um, what I do usually is I fire a set every 30 seconds. And if you keep in mind that you have a 100 second reload and if you fire five torpedoes, one set, which is almost equal to two times three you're used to fire with all the other Japanese DD, uh, you can get out a set of torpedoes every 33 seconds in this boat. And that's a faster reload than a kamikaze or any fast firing gunboat. And that is what makes this ship very dangerous, to fire a set of five hard hitting torpedoes every 33 seconds. So don't make the mistake to fire all, f all three sets at once and run around for 100 seconds. F try to fire them every, every 30, 40 seconds. So you're always loaded with a set and ready for a changing situation, which will help you uh, to increase the hits on the ships. Getting back to this situation, you can see the core first is reversing, so that's why I'm using a narrow spread and a wide spread, because I expect him to reverse further. Why do I expect this? Because we have the kips, uh, caps, uh, we are leading in ships, so the only thing what the, sh the battleships usually do is reversing in that situation. So it's a pretty safe bet to say they, they keep reversing. And with this uh, Yamato here, I use a wide spread, because uh, my team is firing at him and uh, one, one hit should be sufficient to kill him. And at the same time I have a smoke left, so I try to get a fire, uh, make him use his DC, or if he's not DCing, uh, it will reduce enough uh, HP for the remaining torpedo to kill him. So, you've seen in this game, I pretty much spread out my torpedoes to many different targets. and. This enabled me to, to get quite some damage. 
and uh, I think 270k for this ship uh, is not too bad. And as you can see from the from the XP rewarded, um, the base XP is also pretty decent. Uh, if you if you get one cap and all the kills and the damage, 3,800 base XP is pretty decent and satisfying. So this ship is a very dangerous ship. Let's move on to the next game. What we have here is uh, a game where this is going to happen what I mentioned in the beginning. You will see the, the red team pretty much clustering around um, and behind the islands of B. So in the beginning I'm heading to A cap uh, just to find out uh, that nobody is going to A cap. So we have two destroyers, usually one goes to uh, A and one to C, sometimes one goes to B and the other goes to A or B. So in this time I'm pretty lucky uh, nobody is contesting C. So I will be able to go C while I drop some torps into the direction uh, where usually the enemy uh, moves. And with my long-range torpedoes uh, you can see that uh, I cover quite some area behind the B cap. Uh, so the, any destroyer uh, moving into that direction uh, will be faced with a lot of incoming destroy, uh, torpedoes. And since the cap here is not contested, uh, it's no big deal to, to be without torpedoes and uh, a single destroyer I can also engage with the strong guns of uh, the Shimakaze. What you might not know or what you might know from the Yudachi, uh, the Japanese destroyers they have a slow uh, turret traverse and a slow reload but they have the most precise um, guns in the games. So if you um, if you do a Kurita fit uh, this ship has 2000 DPS which is equal to most other destroyers and uh, just the Fletcher uh, is with 3700 uh, and the Akizuki is uh, 4000 but most other destroyers they hover be behind uh, around 1500 and 2500 uh, but they have a much greater dispersion and because you hit every single bullet or even on the, uh, in the distance this ship has a much better real DPS compared to many other ships, which makes uh, it a real threat in a gunfight, uh, even though it has a very slow reload. So back to the situation. Now you see everybody is clustered around. And uh, I'm starting with the core first. And I'm sending out uh, two sets and a third behind because with my uh, this this is by the way the 11 uh, the 12.8 kilometer range extended fit. So uh, you can see from the from the white circle of my around my ship uh, when the torpedoes are active, you can see the the maximum range of the torpedoes, and you can see which ships are in range for the maximum range. So wait wait for me to to switch for the torpedo and then you can see the, the maximum range. And you can see how long ago I fired these torpedoes and they're still hitting. You see they're still moving. Any other DD they, they would have expired already but here we are still moving while I try to avoid that legendary ship here and for my cheap torpedoes to to get the reload. So you see that was a long range hit uh, at about 12 km I would guess. So now I'm running away from this Jamato and at the same time having a look of what is going to happen at the B-ships and I expect the Yamato to uh, to stay uh, to stay on the pass but unfortunately he moves out so I thought it might be much more attractive to torp this set of campers to get some hits than to uh, to get a hit on a, on a moving out Jamato uh, which has no influence on that game and no impact uh, while these ships do have and if I get a kill or two on these ships uh, it's a much greater impact because we can get the, the caps. Uh, the single Yamato is no threat. 
So I'm using um, a, a narrow and a wide and you see I'm, I'm torping basically the whole area and I'm targeting two different ships. So don't make the mistake to focus everything on one ship. Uh, as I said before, these torpedoes are strong enough with almost 25k per torpedo. You need one set per ship and you, with, uh, with damaged legendary ships, um, two torpedo hits are usually sufficient to, to kill them. So, and you will see what happens here. Uh, one keeps reversing, uh, the other is pretty static. Uh, so, yeah, bang bang and bang bang. Goodbye, it's a double strike. And now we go back uh, because there's the, uh, the Chapayev with the 12 km radar. And uh, we want to avoid that. And as you can see, uh, usually when people see the torpedoes, they pop up the radar. So, uh, I expected the radar to pop up. So, I'm moving out of range. And I pretty soon will have reached the maximum range so his radar is useless and also on 12 km the Chapayev uh, basically can't hit me and uh, now we're going for the Jamato and waiting for our 15 torpedoes uh, to reload and we have all the time in the world because the Chapayev used the radar uh, for the next uh, two and a half three minutes uh, we are very safe if we don't do a mistake driving uh, too close to the Jamato but obviously we don't. So always uh, turn on the aim predictor and monitor where the where the ships travel. You can you can see I have it active almost all the time because it's the most important information you can get. So here I'm topping the current situation and you can see the Yamato has the guns to the left so I expect him to make a right turn. So I'm topping another set uh, to to the left as if he would do a 90 degree right turn then I would hit his full broadside so let's see uh, how much he will turn and as you can see he only slightly turned right but at least I get two hits which uh, is decent and now we just have to finish him off and my team is in range now so they start to help and I was hoping to get the Kraken, there's the um, there's no flooding at the moment. He uses the damage control, so he's almost dead. So I'm I'm smoking up. I'm starting to to get a, to try to get a fire, but unfortunately my team is faster than me. So in the moment I get the fire, the ship is being killed. So unfortunately I don't get a Kraken, but still a very decent game. Having said that, thank you for watching. I hope you got some ideas of how to run the ship and don't run it like the other Japanese. Fire uh, a set every 30 seconds, use the aim prediction, uh, stay away from radar and top the radar campers from 12 kilometers. Those are my tips. Enjoy, be successful and see you out there. Bye bye.